Homesteading, and I'm in the garage this morning, and we're going to work on a 10 horse snow blower. I'll give you a little bit of backstory. Last week it snowed like absolutely crazy, um, and there's so much snow back in the bush that in one week I can't get back with a four wheeler. Because if you drive on the path repeatedly, um, normally you can keep going back because you pack down the snow, it hardens. It snowed so much in one week, I can't get back there. I returned the Massey 231 to my uncle because I was doing an engine job for him. So I don't have that. I've got my Massey 50, but it's actually in the pasture and the snow is as high as the front axle. And I don't have a snow blower for that either. So I don't know if that would help very much. So I looked around and my options are limited. And what I have is a snow blower. <laughs> I got this snow blower for free a few years ago. So I've never actually heard it run. Um, and we're gonna get this sucker running hopefully so I can snow blow back to the sugar shack. I at least have to get the trail clear enough so I can run my four-wheeler so I can carry back wood and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we're gonna clean out the tank and put a new filter on and we're gonna start rolling. It's a 1028 landmark snow blower. I've never really ever heard of that but it's a 10 horse Tecumseh on it. So, it's not a bad snow blower, but the ring rotted off that holds the chute, and the chute fell off. The engine doesn't start, but the bonus is it's not seized either, so we're going to start taking the carburetor off. Them. So first we're going to take this cover off that goes over the carburetor. My garage has turned into a bit of a wreck. Uh, with all the snow and everything, I pulled in snow, I got junk lying everywhere, and I just choose to do more. <laughs> I gotta clean my garage. It's on the list of things to do. Well, one season runs into another, and the next thing you know, your garage is a mess. So now you're going to pull the knob off and then the cover comes right off. So now we're going to take off the primer line. Wow, that's, that's on there. I'm going to take off the primer line. There. We're going to take off this bolt and the bolts on the other side and then just unhook the linkage and the uh, carburetor is off. You know, I dropped a screw down the cover. What's the chances? I set it there and then it fell right down that hole. So we're going to have to dig that sucker out. But maybe it's uh, worth the time taking the front cover off. If the magnets on the flywheel are all rusty, it won't give you spark either. So maybe it's worth taking it off. The snow this year has been very, very inconvenient, to say the least. It has been in the road of me doing many things. Um, cutting firewood. It just makes everything so much harder. So I'm kind of hoping that I can get back there and still salvage my day. This thing's stubborn right to the end. We take this off. Okay, so take the clamp off the fuel line with a pair of needle nose pliers. There we go. So we're going to blow off the carburetor, get rid of all the dirt. So I blew off the carburetor, it's all ready to go, and I noticed I forgot to order my gasket, the gasket on the carburetor. So never reuse the gasket. Um, for the price of them, it's not worth reusing, because if they suck air in, uh, it's not going to run properly. For this time, I'm going to just reuse the gasket, 
because I forgot. So, but for the price of it, just change the gasket. First thing we're going to do is remove the main jet. And there is some crud in the little holes there. That's where the fuel gets uh, sucked up. Remove that. Ooh. See, that's what's in your bowl. And if you just get it running, what's going to happen here is you're going to suck up all those chunks into the little jets, and then it's going to stop running. So you're going to be constantly fighting with it, keeping it running. Oh, I got to blow that off. I'm going to blow this off first. I'm going to remove this gasket, the old gasket. Please. Oh. See these little pins seize in there, but thank goodness it's not seized. Set that over there. Um, oh, your, your needle is actually seized in there. That's great. So that's what the needle looks like. And there is a bunch of junk in there. Okay. So now, so what you gotta do is do yourself a favor and just clean your carburetor. Sometimes just running a bit of gas through it can make it uh, run and uh, reliable. But most times, if you want to be reliable, you have to just take it apart, disassemble it, and start from scratch. Woo! We're gonna remove the idle screw. Okay, so now we got the main jet out. We got your float hole there and your idle screws empty. I'm gonna use a little bit of carb cleaner and use the little tube that comes with it. Make sure you put your uh, safety glasses on. So we're gonna spray into here first. Wow, that's plugged good. Spray into all the holes. Wow, this thing is awful. Okay. Okay, we're going to take the blow gun. We're going to blow in all the holes. So the idea is you want to blow in every hole. Make sure you cleaned out every passage. So now I'm going to spray more carb cleaner in. So now we're going to try out the uh, low idle jet. There's little holes here. I try to... Okay, so now I'm going to blow in it again. So I got a piece of cardboard, make sure that everything stays clean. I got a Tecumseh uh, kit, comes with the main jet, some plugs, and new needles and seats and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to start installing that. OK. 
Okay, we're gonna look. 86. What does this one say? Uh, wow, it doesn't actually say what it is. Should be right, I got them to look it up, so make sure all the needles are the same. They sure look like it. I'm gonna reuse the spring. We're gonna screw in the, uh, the idle screw. You screw it in gently until it bottoms out. Okay, so I always go out about one full turn to start off. We have to adjust it after that. Oh, I didn't clean out the bowl. Here we go. We didn't clean out the bowl or clean off the float. Where's my safety glasses? Oh, they're on my head. That's nice, eh? Clean this all up good, good. You don't want chunks going through your nice, new, clean carburetor. That would not be good. And that's why we remove carburetors and clean it. This gunk that's in here, that stuff will come loose off your uh, bowl. And it will uh, plug up the little passages, whew, my gracious, in your carburetor. So you have to clean it. There's no option. If you want it to run good. Okay. We're going to move this over here. So way down in here where the needle goes is a rubber seat. And you kind of have to fish at it until it comes out. Okay, so right there is your new seat. It's very tiny and don't lose it. So we stick it in the hole. And you gently shove it down into the hole. You keep going around it because if you get it sideways, it's hard to flip it back. Okay, so there it's seated. So now you get the new needle and you hook it on this little spring. Okay, so you get a needle, the new needle and you hook it on that little spring which actually hooks on here, this little tab on your bowl. And it just kind of keeps it in place while you set it down into the uh, carburetor. Okay, we're going to slide the pivot pin for the bowl in. And we just slide it all the way through and line it up. We're going to put the new gasket on the carburetor. This little higher spot here goes to the far side away from your pivot, so it has more room to go. See, so it goes right there. So we got our new main jet. This kit came with a new main jet. Now, we will screw this in. and tighten it up. Don't go crazy on it. The main jet I'm gonna screw in till it bottoms out and then I'm gonna do one turn. So there you go. We got the idle jet in, the main jet in. It's been blown out and cleaned out. Uh, that is about all we need to do. So now we're gonna reinstall it. We're going to remove the fuel tank, clean it out a few times, make sure nothing's in there. I don't want to clean the carb and everything and uh, not clean the fuel tank and the fuel line. And then it doesn't run properly after that. Okay, so we're just draining the fuel tank and then we're going to rinse out the fuel tank a few times.
Okay, so we are going to reinstall the carburetor. Put your primer line on. And we're gonna put the fuel line on. Okay, so you gotta get this little linkage and get it back in the exact same hole it was in. And bolt it down. What I, so what I'm gonna do is remove the front cover off the engine and uh, sand the magnets. Uh, you don't have to do that, but I'm trying to cover all the bases. When I get out there, I wanna actually be able to uh, blow snow with it. I don't wanna be fiddling. So we're gonna take the cover off now and uh, clean it up. We're gonna lift the electric start off. Now there's a 7 16 bolt down here. You loosen off. There's another one down here. Okay, so there's two half inch ones on the top. Oh man. go okay here's the magnets on your flywheel uh, they go by your coil and it breaks the field and then it will send a pulse which may gives you your spark uh, and if they're rusty they don't actually work that good so I'm going to just sand that quickly this is one of the reasons why you might not have a spark too I didn't even check Right where the coil is too, you sand that gently. And you get to a free spot and you sand this one. And now we can put the cover back on. Okay, so we tighten up the top bolts. Okay, so just check that there's oil in it. Well, the oil looks pretty good, actually. I'm gonna change it, but I wanna get the thing running first. I am never prepared. I just never have enough gas. Just enough to fill one tank, probably. If that. Oh, half a tank, maybe. Okay, so let's see if we can get this sucker to fire up. I'm gonna turn the choke on. We're gonna put it to uh, full throttle. There, so the fuel's on.
So there you go. She fires up a little bit. We got to adjust the carburetor. Uh, so I'm going to open the door a bit and get my coat on. Okay, so that fires up good. We're gonna throw the cover back on and then we're gonna to try to fix the chute enough just to use it. So we'll soon find out if I think it's crazy for me to be able to blow snow all the way back to the sugar shack with this thing. Um, I didn't pay anything for it and it's been sitting for a long time. Uh, so hopefully it makes it back there. <laughs> um, You know what? You can save a lot of money um, by just doing stuff yourself. It costs a lot of money to get people to fix your stuff, for sure. And uh, and if and if you can't fix stuff yourself, you should try to trade with people that can. Um, trade stuff you can do. Everyone has skills of one sort or another. And you can trade something you know for what someone else knows. There's always ways to get around it. But if you pay to get stuff fixed, it costs so much money. Okay. On off okay so there you go we got it all on and it's running now i just got to fix the chute i'm gonna tap down this edge okay and we're gonna have to try to weld this ring in place Uh, my shop's not set up to be welding inside for now. I'd love to have tin and everything, but I don't feel like setting my shop on fire. So I'm pulling it out. I'm gonna try to weld that ring on. I have a Hobart welder that my wife got for Father's Day. And I actually haven't used it yet. Uh, she got it used, so hopefully it works. I should have tried it way before now. So this is what my wife got me. It's a Hobart 140 wire feed welder. Um, so it is pretty awesome. I haven't had much chance to use it or even try it. So I'm gonna weld that little ring and we're gonna see how it works. My shop has wood and gas and everything everywhere. So I don't wanna be welding in here. Eventually I'd love to get tin walls and make this area where I can actually physically weld.
That is absolutely awful welding. Definitely not my best work, but it seems to be hard to weld this material. So anyway, she's tacked way better than it was. We're going to install the chute. There. Oh, oh that's over. Not too bad this hasn't been blown before just driven over many times with a four-wheeler so it really is hard going but it's done an okay job So there you go. I got the snowblower running. It's not running the best. The chute doesn't rotate, but I can get back to my sugar shack. I'm thinking it'll take about an hour to blow that though. But you know what? You start noticing things you really, really need. And I need a tractor with a snowblower. If I want to do maple syrup, you just can't get back there. So you guys have a good one.